So as it turns out, it's not only 100% and 50% that have tricks. I actually have lots of math ninja tricks um, for different percents so that I do them easily in my head. And honestly, most of them are based on knowing how simple it is to multiply with fractions. So let's take a look at my next trick. I'm going to look at this uh, on this video, I have the trick for 25% and 75%. So first of all, I'm just going to draw this circle here. And I want this circle to represent everything. Um, oh, my goodness. I was just trying to make my circle neat, and it erased the whole thing. There we go. We get a circle. So this whole circle here is going to represent 100%. All of it. Everything. Now, we already said before that if I wanted to talk about 50%, that would be half of a circle. So I could just take my circle, chop it in half, and then half is 50%, the other half is 50%, right? Because half of 100 is 50. But what if I broke it in half again? Think about if you broke 100 cents into four pieces. We know what four coins are worth 100 cents. Those would be quarters, right? 100 cents is the same as four quarters. And so 100%, if I broke it into four pieces, would be like 25%, 25%, 25 25%, and 25%. Why do we care? What I'm showing you here is that taking 25% of something is breaking it into fourths. It's taking one out of four pieces. And so that means that 25% is equivalent to a quarter, which shouldn't surprise you. But the quick, quick way to take a quarter of something to multiply by a quarter, a quarter of something multiplying by a quarter, is just to divide by four. Because what does a quarter mean? It means breaking something into four equal pieces. Okay, beautiful. So let's use this. Okay, here we go. I have some example problems with 25%. Again, this is not the only way to do this, guys, and this is not the direct translation way, um, the long way that most teachers show you. This is a shortcut for 25%. So remember, 25% of something is a quarter of something. It's breaking it into four equal pieces. So if I want to take 25% of 40, I can just divide 40 by 4. 40 divided by 4 is 10. Okay, again, if 25% of 16 is just a quarter of 16, and so I can just divide that by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. Now, mm, things aren't always easy to divide by 4. For example, if I had 25% of 34, I couldn't do that my math in my head. So I would need to come over here. I'm going to do it in side work. And again, I'm just going to do the shortcut method of dividing by 4. I happen to know that 4 goes into 34 8 times, but not perfectly. 8 times 4 is 32, so I have a remainder, a remainder of 2. Now, a lot of students don't know what to do with this. We have an option whenever we run out of digits um, to divide by. There's nothing to um, drop here, um, no other digit to go. So I have two choices. One, I could make a fraction out of this right now, 8 and 2 fourths. Um, if you did that, remember to reduce your final fraction answer. Um, but right now, I'm ready to do a fraction. Or I can keep dividing for a decimal. And how would I keep dividing? I would plunk down a decimal to lock my place value on 34, and then I could have a zero. And with a zero, I sure can keep dividing. Four goes into 25 times, and it goes in perfectly, so I'm done. Don't forget to raise up my decimal place. And so 25% of 34 is 8.5. Great, and let's do a nasty one, because you know, they're not always nice on the GED. If I was doing 25% of 7.1, the easiest way to do that, again, because 25% means 1 fourth, I could just divide 7.1 by 4. I probably didn't give myself enough time to do this math, or enough space to do this math. Let me try. Move it up a little bit, sorry. There we go. You need room to go down and division. Okay, 4 goes into 7 once, but again, not perfectly. There's a remainder, right? We have a remainder of 3. And drop my 1. 4 goes into 31 7 times, but again, there's a remainder. Because 7 times 8 is 28, I have, let's see, 29, 30, 31. I have 3 left over. And you might be saying, oh my gosh, I have no more digits. But remember, if your decimal's already in place, you can have as many zeros as you want. I'll give myself a 0. 4 goes into 37 times again. And not perfectly, though, that's 28 
Oh, look, I can move this. This is very exciting. I'm getting smarter. Okay, remainder 2, and I, again, can have another 0. 4 goes into 25 times. Remember to raise up your decimal place, and it's a long, nasty answer, but nonetheless, 25% of 7.1 is 1.775. Okay, so I told you that I would give you a trick for both 25% and 75% because they're related. So let's go back to our little diagram. We said if we broke 100% into four equal pieces, each one would be 25%. 25, 25, 25. Now, Everybody around here probably knows how to count by 25s because you've had quarters in your pocket. So let's take a look. 25, 50, 75. You can really quickly see that if I had, let's get a highlighter out here, three of these quarters, 25, 50, 75, uh, that would be 75%. And so what I just basically learned from that is that 75% is the same as three quarters. Okay, so remember what it means a quarter something. It means to break it into four equal pieces, divide by four. But if I want three of those quarters, I'm also going to need to multiply by three. show you what I mean. I'm going to show you in a diagram here, so let's take a look. I want you to imagine that somebody asked me to find 75% of 20. Um, most students have to do this the long way. They remember, oh, my math teacher taught me to put this into a decimal, and of means times, and 20, and then they do all the side work with multiplying decimals. Whereas I, because I know this trick that I'm about to show you, can do this in seconds without doing any side work. Wouldn't that be nice? So what I'm trying to tell you is if 20 is the whole 100%, it's the whole thing, this is the whole thing, and I want just 75% of that, three out of four pieces, the first thing I would need to do is break 20 into four equal pieces. Well, let's think about it. 20 divided by four is five. So just like I can break up 100% into four equal pieces, I can break up 20 into four equal pieces. But I don't want just one of those uh, pieces. 75% is like taking three quarters. So I need three of those pieces. Oh, <laughs> undo. <laughs> Not supposed to have a pen, y'all. Supposed to have a highlighter. Let's try that again. So three of those pieces, five, 10, 15. Um, it's really easy. Break it into four equal pieces. So I'm dividing by four and then I'm going to times that by three. Okay. So I get 15. Okay. I'm not going to draw a diagram every time. Um, so let's see if we can use this trick here in some other cases. So let's take 75% of eight. First thing we need to do, remember, we are going to break it into four equal pieces, but then when we're done, we're going to take three of those. So um, eight divided by four, well, if I break eight into fourths, I'll have two, 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 two. Okay, so eight divided by four is two. Okay, but I don't just want one of those fourths, I want three of those fourths. So I'm going to take that two, I'm going to take three of them. Uh, two times three is six. 75% of eight is six. And you do this enough times, you're going to be able to do it so quickly in your head. Let's do one more, one more. Let's do 75% of something that seems gross. How about 80? So you're going to do 75% of 80 here. Well, if I were to break 80 into fourths, divide it by four, which is the first part of my trick, I'd get 20s, of course, because 20, 20, 20, 20 gives 80. Again, I'm doing this all in my head. I'm just trying to show you what's going on in my head. But I don't just want one of those fourths. I want three of those fourths. I want 75%. So multiply that by 3. 20, 40, 60. 75% of 80 is 60.